there's a deeply strange, insidious, enthusiastic push as of late, led by those moneyed forces that have so wrested control of entertainment and popular culture, to deeply instill a paralyzing guilt and shame and self-loathing in those of European background. We are now told we're essentially responsible for virtually all of the world's ills, the lion's share of historical transgressions and instances of oppression and injustice and abuse. That the best summary of our ancestors is that they were slavers and abusers, and men who supposedly gloried in genocidal fantasies. Young white children, especially, now have such sentiments drilled into their heads on a daily basis, in public schools and universities, by individuals they've been taught to trust, as they watch TV or movies, even now, in many cases, at home, by their own parents, who've been similarly conditioned for many years now. To the extent that many of these are incapable of even conceiving of their ethnic background or heritage without feeling disgust, anger, disdain, or revulsion. All of this, broadly speaking, is a lie. An immensely draining lie. After all, our understanding of who we are as human beings is, in large part, justly determined by where we've come from. Our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and ancestors stretching back centuries and millennia. Their culture, their beliefs, their words and actions, to misunderstand them is to misunderstand yourself, and to misunderstand yourself is to misinterpret reality and your very existence, to have a faulty map as you navigate through life. Telling a young child that he springs from an evil root might justly be viewed as a powerful form of child abuse. But this isn't the only reason it's so sick, wrong, and unhealthy. It's so sick, wrong, and unhealthy because it's a lie. To give credit where due to the opposing argument, it is true that, historically, we've enjoyed massively outsized power. As a group that makes up scarcely 10% of the world's population, up until very recently, we were masters, in one way or another, of a majority of the, quote, civilized world. And, in fact, one small subset alone, the ancient, quote, Germanic family of Celts, Goths, Franks, Frisians, Lombards, the Norse and Anglo-Saxons, largely a singular people in a genetic sense, held immense sway over Italy, Spain, France, Germany, Ireland, Scotland, Britain, and the Netherlands, stretching all the way into Russia which itself is named after the Norse Rus, and virtually everywhere in between. And with this great power, fairly enough, comes great responsibility. And tremendous historical power opens the door for tremendous retrospective scrutiny. Were mistakes made? Absolutely. Human beings make mistakes. This is unavoidable. But I think the operative question should rather be this. If the places had been switched and it had been another people wielding this immense power, perhaps one of the non-white groups being taught to be so angry and so deeply resentful in our age, would they have done better in these regards? Would they have been more just, magnanimous, noble, or even-handed? Using both past and present as our guide, I hope you'll give some sincere, objective, dispassionate thought to this question. I think it's fair to say that no people has devoted so much of its time, energy, and wealth to the attempted betterment of other peoples and nations. It's all but impossible for me to imagine another people so completely relinquishing their power fighting entire wars that nearly tore their nations to pieces over issues like slavery, instituting policy after policy that makes life measurably worse and more difficult for their own sons and daughters to hopefully make them slightly better for those of other peoples. Much of this shouldn't be cheered, as it's a result of shrewd, subversive, strategic indoctrination and brazen dishonesty 
and the aggressive and unfair dishonoring of one's ancestors should always be viewed as both disgusting and unfortunate. But if nothing else, much of it arises from a good place, from a unique desire to do or be good, according to our prevailing definition of that term. To those of a European background listening to these words, especially young folks, let me tell you a little something about who you are and who your ancestors are. Because if I don't, at this point in time, it's all but certain nobody else will. You come from the Indo-European language family, a language spread by those who came before you to everywhere from India and ancient Persia and Greece, to Italy and North Africa, to Rome and Britain and Scandinavia, and virtually everywhere in between. You almost certainly spring from one of three major haplogroup lineages, one of which covered vast distances to the east, one of which created a vast seagoing empire and settled along coastal territory to the west, and the other largely hailing from the north, creating three offshoots of a tree that would go on to spread its branches across the entirety of the world. You come from a lineage of pioneering, adventurous, masterfully creative, and incredibly capable peoples, always striving, seeking new horizons. From the great sailors who first circumnavigated the globe and painstakingly charted the land, to Lewis and Clark, and the great and hardy men who led the first expeditions to the Poles. A people willing to take that greatest of all leaps, to pick up everything and move across vast oceans, to settle in areas in which survival itself was absolutely not certain, in attempts to make the land flourish and create something great and new. Men who would take those seagoing craft and eventually create undersea vessels, massive carriers and flying machines a technology that must have been seen as impossible magic just a few generations ago, which is now ubiquitous and allows any man, woman, or child to go virtually anywhere on Earth in a handful of hours. You come from a lineage of those willing to endure immense hardship, who, generation after generation, did all they could to ensure this burden would be lesser and lesser for those that might come after a lineage of great, seemingly unstoppable warriors. From the Spartans' last stand at Thermopylae, to the Goths and Romans joining forces to beat back the Huns in the massive Battle of the Catalanian Plains, in which one of the greatest leaders in history very willingly paid the ultimate price for his brave leadership on the field, being felled in the front lines by a Hunnic javelin. To Charles Martel, the Hammer and the Battle of Tours, and approximately 700 years later, the Battle of Las Navas de Tolosa, in which a small force of European knights took on an Islamic force far larger than their own in brutal hand-to-hand -hand fighting. In each of these two battles, somehow managing to kill at least tenfold more than they lost, in ultimately and permanently wresting back control of Spain and the Iberian Peninsula from Islamic incursion. You hail from an ancestral line that would go on to create what was arguably the highest standard of living and the most highly cultured and educated and truly civil civilization in human history, who, after creating this solid foundation, proceeded to then cultivate some of the greatest art and artists this world has ever known. Composers with talent that seemed positively divinely inspired, architects and builders capable of producing great structures that are still without equal to this day, philosophers who made the greatest strides in helping make sense of our world, and great writers who did so much to add beauty and potency to the lives we lead within it. The automobile, the plane, the train, the television and the computer and the internet, our modern roads and highway systems. We rarely stop to recognize the extent of the achievements of this small people group because we're all so naturally and so completely immersed in them. We take it all for granted. 
but it was great genius that accomplished these things, and we do it a tremendous disservice by so taking it for granted. It's the greatest testament to your ancestry that it would take hundreds of hours or a great many full-length novels to even begin to outline their profound and impactful achievements. The best of these were truly gifted men, and through your veins flow these same gifts, this same powerful potential, not just to achieve great things, but to be a force for genuine justice, civility, and decency along the way. Those folks doing everything in their power to convince you otherwise, doing their damnedest to convince you of your evil heritage, that the tremendous success of your forebears was just a stroke of luck, that injustice or brutality or oppression were the foremost tools and characteristics of your forefathers. These are deeply sick individuals. And it's important to know that the extent to which you listen to them, the extent to which you flippantly toss aside your unique heritage and join them in their hateful crusade, which increasingly seems aimed at the total destruction not just of the cultural and spiritual foundations, but of your people themselves, represents the extent to which doors will open for you in many spheres. You'll be faced with every incentive to do so, to play the role of quizzling and traitor and be richly rewarded for it. Career advancement, riches and power and influence, because the world of money, which so indirectly controls and orients near all other spheres at present, is now dominated by the worst and most ignoble and dishonorable sorts of men. But I hope you'll pause before taking any such steps and take a moment to remember all those who came before you, their incredible sacrifices, all they endured and pushed through the seemingly insurmountable obstacles they defeated and left conquered in their wake, in very large part to ensure that they improved things, that your life was a better one than they were able to enjoy, that while they held the baton, they managed to move forward despite everything and create something beautiful and worthwhile for their posterity. All of this, is now under threat of being lost forever. It's so important to understand that those leading the preaching of self-hatred very often don't even share your background, even if they may appear to at a glance, but rather a very different background. Which means they're not in actuality preaching self-hatred, so much as hatred of the other, as they preach suicide to you and yours often with a scarcely restrained enthusiasm and excitement, they are greatly empowered as a result. It's sick, insidious, disgusting, revolting, and yet, at present, it's winning the day. You represent the hope of turning this tide. Understand who you are. Understand where and who you come from and be courageous. Refuse to be dishonest and mindlessly mouth the words you're being so pressured to speak. If you care in the least to prevent all of this from disappearing forever, strive to prove yourself equal to those who came before you. If the storyline of these preachers of hatred should win the day, it's not just Western civilization and culture that will disappear forever. It'll be an extremely dystopian future for all. Those playing the leading roles in shouting about oppression and injustice and brutality and so urging others to do so, ironically, tend to come from a lineage that puts ours to shame in this respect. From a lineage that seemed to pioneer and master the slave trade, the drug trade, nation and culture destroying usurious banking and human trafficking, and even relish in these things, with, quote, religious books that encourage such activities. Should they someday inherit the earth, all of that grace and 
magnanimity and nobility of prior ages will inevitably evaporate, and what we'll be left with will be truly a hell on earth, and will become ever more so at a pace most of us can't imagine. To repeat, you are not evil, nor were the men who came before you, but you are locked in a battle against evil. Whether we like it or not, this is the hand we've been dealt. I am only asking you to begin to recognize it, and if possible, to please join me and take up the fight in whatever form or fashion you're able. It's no exaggeration to state that our future entirely depends on it.